Hey guys, I'm Aspen Croft, and today we're going to take a look at the Insonic DP4 effects processor from 1992, and this is amazing. Okay, so it came out in the early 1990s, but it still can sound a lot like any 80s effects processor and that's how I like to use it and it can sound very gritty it can sound very clean and I don't care what anyone says in the forum or in groups this cannot be emulated in software you have to have a dp4 to make a sound like a dp4 <laughs> It has a lot of cool algorithms, reverbs, delays, pitch shifters, compressors, a very cool vocoder as you heard in the intro. It also has a lot of cool guitar effects. So what's going on? Well, at the front we have a mic and line input, XLR mic input. The original DP4 only has jacks at the back. We have the levels for each of the four inputs and outputs. At the back you can see the input and output ports, one through four for each side, inputs and outputs. And we have MIDI, very important on this module. We have a two-digit LED display and a 32-character LCD display, cursion knobs, and we have a data entry knob, the big silver one. And we have the different configurations written at the panel itself, the four different configs. I'll get back to that later. And we have the four buttons labeled A, B, C, and D, which access the four different effects units on this machine. And we have a config button. Pay attention to the hack job done on the battery backup done by the former owner. Normally I would replace a battery into a holder and its original place. Maintenance and repairs aren't strangers to us dabbling in retro vintage gear. So let's take a quick look at my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. If you're looking for some custom circuit board manufacturing, if you have hobbyists, electronics, projects, or looking for a DIY solution, why not check them out? I'll leave a link for you in the description. And the thing to remember with the DP4 is that the four different effects units, they can be configured in any way you want, A, B, C, and D. And now I've set this up as a one source configuration, which means I have four effects boxes ready to process one input. So let's edit effect box number one, A, which is a reverb, and it's now set to a small plate, but I can use the data entry wheel to choose another algorithm. So let's choose one of the uh, plates, and I can now adjust parameters for that algorithm. And there's a lot of parameters to adjust. You can pretty much control anything within this DP4. 
by pressing the button select again. It takes me back to where I started and I can now press another label button if I want to edit one of the other effects in this chain. But here comes the kicker by pressing the button config. Well, that takes me into another set of presets in the DP4. And it's within this part of the DP4 you can set and choose the different types of configurations you want the DP4 to work under. So in configuration mode and pressing edit, you get to see what type of configuration you want to use. And it's now set in a, a one source config where I use the A, B, C and D effects as a one on one source. But I can now turn the data entry wheel and put this in two source configuration where I have two ins and two outs and two ins and two outs, A, B and C, D. A three source config or a four source config where I have four totally independent effects processors from each other. Perfect if you have a, a large mixing desk with auxiliary sends where you can have one effect on each auxiliary send, one through four. And when I bought the DP4 new in 1992, this was the way I used it on my large mixing console. I had four auxiliaries and I sent those out to these four different effects in a four source configuration. And it's also within these uh, config presets edits, you can uh, store your own patches, presets that remembers the, the routing and configurations uh, associated with that. That will not happen if you're out of the config edit uh, boundaries. And this can often be a confusing little thing when you're new to, to using the DP4. And pay attention to those uh, markings between the effects names. You see arrows and pluses and, uh, and arrows and such. And these uh, are meant to tell you if the effects are, uh, how they are routed uh, in accordance to each other. Some might be serial, that's the arrows. Some might be in parallel. Some might be fed back to each other, etc. I like to use this in the DAW as well as a vocal uh, chain of effects and I'm going to show you how I've set up my DP4 in my DAW project to use as an external effect. And how you set up an external effect in your DAW, uh, please refer to your DAW of choice and the manual there. I've set this up in Nuendo, uh, which is the same as Cubase, and I've set this up as an effect send. Uh, you can also do this as an insert send, but I've set this up as an effect send. And I've set up a vocal chain on the DP4 itself, uh, which starts with a compressor, a pitch shifter, a reverb, and some delays, A, B, C, and D. And as you can see, when I press a button, you can see that reverb unit capitalize on screen, the letters capitalize on screen. So let's have a quick listen to the vocal performance.
So these are the four effects going on this vocal right now. But I want to change some of that reverb. And that's the C effect. So I press button label C and that will capitalize. I press edit and now I can change my parameters for that whole reverb or I can change the whole reverb to something else. And there's a lot of parameters to change if I want to. The usual stuff for a reverb in this case. So let's go back to the um, to the reverb itself and see if I can change that to something else, another algorithm. Plates or reverse reverb maybe. Let's go with the whole reverb and do some uh, some adjustments to that instead. Mix and decay is um, often something I want to change. I will leave this world behind If I know that you're alright I will leave you to love you So that's okay. So I'll go out of that and do some changes to the delays. That's effect unit D. And I've set this up as a tempo delay. I will leave this world behind, behind. If I know that you're alright I will leave you to love you I will leave this world behind If I know that you're The BPM of this song is 120, so I've set this to 60. But I can also set this to uh, accept MIDI clock. I've hooked up a MIDI cable at the back, getting a MIDI sync from the DAW. And now this will sync to that MIDI clock. So let's go out of that and do something with the pitch shifter, a very common 80s trick to um, Split the vocal into two parts, one pitch shifted up a notch and one pitch shifted down a notch and blend those together to make a fatter sound. I will leave this world behind If I know that you're alright I will leave you to love you But it's uh, better in small increments. So that's a pitch shifter. I can pan those, of course, since I'm using the, the stereo output. And let's have a look at the compressor as well. Pretty standard stuff for a vocal compressor. So that is my vocal chain. So let's have a listen again and see if we can adjust the delays. The vocal as a whole is a lot louder than that now than it should be of course, but check out the video description for a link to how the song ended up at the end. And finally I'm gonna show you the, the vocoder part. The two vocoder presets need to use both input 1 and input 2. Input 1 will normally source the, the microphone, the vocals, and input 2 will source the, in this case a synth uh, or something with a, a large uh, harmonic content. 
And all effects units are set up to vocoding, uh, the low, mid, mid to, and high, and you can adjust parameters within those four bands of the vocoder. The mix, volume, speech gain, siblings, etc., etc. Uh, the usual stuff for a vocoder, and this sounds pretty nice. I believe uh, Daft Punk used uh, this uh, vocoder on many of their earlier songs. I can't confirm it, but I've read it. If you have any intel on that, please say so in the comment section. So let's check out how this sounds. You heard it in the intro, but, it, but let's hear it again. Vocoder preset number one or vocoder preset number two. Just around the corner, I feel a waking mind. The lies, another time. When darkness and light are one. I am a message from another time. Well, there you have it, the Ansonic DP4 effects processor from 1992. If you see one for sale, pick it up. I find this amazing. It's very usable, it's very flexible, and I love this effect. And it was also one of my workhorse effects back in the early 90s when I had a much bigger studio with a big mixer and auxiliary sense and things like that. I used this a lot back then. As always, I'm Espen Croft, I am the 80s occasionally dabbling in 90s gear, and until next time, be safe and cheers!